Hey everyone, hi, welcome. Okay, so I have a confession. Um, and, and if you watched my video yesterday and you really kind of combed through the comments, you would know, you would know like what I'm going to confess. And that the 100 book challenge was intended, that video was intended to be a joke, a jest. <laughs> and I am so sorry ahead of time that I played it so serious. Um, there, I, <laughs> I'm not a sarcastic person. I'm actually quite very, very earnest and I almost like despise the tone that I have when I'm being sarcastic. Um, so I didn't want to play it like sarcastic um, or, or sort of snarky in any way. And so what ended up happening is that I tried to play it deadpan, but I did it like too well. Like I did it too earnestly and I didn't realize that it was going to come off so so earnest um, and so honest. And so as I'm reading through the comments, people are like rooting for me with this 100 book challenge where I'm going to read, a, I mean, where I'm gonna buy 100 books before I read anything. And to me, you know, it was, it's, the, it's a very odd, uh, it's an odd challenge for someone who loves books as much as I do, uh, who loves reading as much as I do, and um, for someone who's on booktube, that, you know, it's odd. And I'm not in a reading slump. I really am um, in, a, in a really good stride with my reading. So the, the, the video was meant to be a jest. And... Then I started thinking backwards, like, why was I joking about this? Like, it was really a bit of a whim, and it's because of this. So if, you, if you're interested in just the haul part um, of this video, because I'm going to do a haul, uh, then I'll, get, I'll leave a, a timestamp below. I'll leave chapters down below. Um, uh, but if you're here to just kind of hear my thoughts about book buying and um, challenges like the 100 book challenge, um, you know, I would encourage you to stick around. So, um, and if you don't know me, I'm Shelly and I'm filming in front of my Christmas tree. And yesterday I put up a video all about how I was going to stop reading until I bought 100 books. Oh, one moment. I, oh, sorry about that. Yesterday I put up this video about how I would, you know, I was going to do the Saintly Steve challenge, which is the inverse of the unholy criminali challenge. All about how I was gonna buy a hundred books before I read a new book but that's um, kind of impossible for me because I love reading so much and I'm planning on starting a, a new book I'm in the middle of a couple of books but I'm in a good spot to start a new one and so that's just not gonna happen I'm not gonna stop reading it would just it would pain my soul to do that um, to stop reading so Here's the deal though, let's talk about the 100 book challenge. First of all, I commend anybody who's doing this challenge, the, the criminali challenge, <laughs> where they stop buying, uh, they stop buying books until they've read 100 books off their shelves. That is a wonderful challenge. And when I saw it going around and I saw booktubers that I admire, Greg from Another Bibliophile Reads, David Wiley, Michael K. Vaughn, and then Criminali, our original uh, creator of this, of this unholy challenge, um, I was like, well, that sounds really good. And in, in all honesty, I was like, that sounds interesting. I was like, maybe I, could, maybe I should do that. Maybe I could do that. And then I thought of something. I thought, how long will it take me to read 100 books? If I do it quickly and I don't pad it with picture books, um, because I love picture books, then it will take me probably around a year, if not a little bit longer, because I don't quite read a hundred books in a year. Um, so that means that I would be in a book buying ban for a year. And when I thought about the terms, the implications of not buying for a year, I was like, I don't really like that because I've actually been really enjoying my buying and I've been loving getting new books and the excitement, not just the excitement, but the knowledge that, that what can, what's contained in those pages can change me in some way, can grow me in some way, can um, engage me in a way that I've never had before. That is really exciting to me that I'm going to meet an author on the page that I've never met before. I love that. Okay, so, I was, and then I was thinking about not having that experience for a year. And of course I can always go to the library, but not having that experience for a year made me sad, um, bummed me out. <laughs> it didn't sound very good. And I know challenges are supposed to be difficult. That's why they're a challenge. Um, but when I started thinking about it in actual days, 
I was like, that is a year of no new books. I don't really like that. So then um, I, I started to think about other re reflective questions about buying and acquiring and things like that. So I was thinking, am I spending too much money on books? And the short answer is no. The long answer is that my husband and I have our own allowances that we get every month and we're allowed to sp spend them on what we on what we want. And I never go over that. <laughs> I'm always within my budget. I'm never taking money from other pots of our finances in order to pay for books. Um, I'm always staying within within my financial means. Um, and in at the end of the day, I'm only buying, a, not only, I'm buying about $60, maybe $70 a worth of books every month, which for me is affordable. So, so there's that. Then I asked another question. My question was, is are my shelves too full? Am I running out of space for books? And again, the short answer is no. My books aren't being double stacked. They're not overflowing. I don't have books hidden in crevices of my house. Um, they're not piling up on the floor. Books have home, a home in my house. Um, every book has a home in my house. And so that, you know, the, the easy answer is no. I, I'm not running out of space. Uh, and if, and if you know what, we even have space for another bookcase if we wanted, if I ended up, you know, growing my collection to the point where I needed a new bookcase. Um, and then the third question I asked was, well, how do I feel when I look at my books? What is my relationship with my books? And as I looked around, I, and I've been doing this a lot because I've been shuffling and um, I'm always touching and manipulating my collection um, of books, especially because I'm on booktube and I'm talking about different books in my collection all the time. So when I look at my books, I don't get a sinking feeling of, uh, oh no, I haven't read all these books and I need to. And, um, you know, there wasn't, there was not anything about wanting a zero TBR or, or anything like that. Um, really when I look at my books, I think about that first answer with, um, acquiring books. I think about the stories that they're going to tell me and the ways that they might change me and the excitement that I feel about meeting an author that maybe many of you have told me about um, and that I'll finally get to meet on the page. So when I look at my collection, I don't get like a sinking feeling or an ugh feeling. I, I get, a, I'm excited and I love my collection um, and, and I am digging into it with all of my TBRs. I'm not buying books to to add. I'm, I'm often picking off my shelves um, and, and so on and so forth. So when I thought about how does my collection make me feel, I, I love it. I mean, I love my collection of books. And, um, and when perhaps when I am either spending too much money on books, when I run out of space, or when my collection starts to um, become something else, um, maybe that of feeling guilty or not great about it, then maybe the, the original unholy 100 book challenge may be for me or a modified version like a 30 book challenge. But for right now, I, it's not, my books aren't causing any issues. Um, and so my uh, poorly delivered hyperbole of saying that I was gonna buy 100 books before I read them was really based off of the answers to those questions. It was re a reaction to that, like, I don't wanna do that challenge, it's not for me. And actually, I would love to, you know, continue to grow my collection. But here's the, also here's the deal. <laughs> I'm like, am I saying here's the deal too much in this video? Uh, I don't know. But I want, I think that book buying, book acquiring, and reading are, are friends. And so I want to get the gang back together. <laughs> I want, I want us to all be able to hang out. I want to um, introduce new books to my collection and I want my current collection to get a lot of love. And so I think together we're able to build a very nice, happy family. Um, but in between then, uh, that, uh, you know, the announcement now, I actually have a book haul that I want to show you. This is the things that I've been acquiring in the last couple of days, um, actually the last couple of weeks, but they have been sitting in a, a small pile 
homeless <laughs> because I don't want to put them away until I've showed you all the books. Okay. So the first couple of books, and so, you know, so I could say that I bought 11 books or <laughs> I've acquired 11 books before I failed my challenge, you know, um, before I failed and started reading again. <laughs> uh, but in all reality, this, these are books that I've had and, and that I've been meaning to show you. So the first couple of books are presents and the first one is from David Wiley and it's written by David Wiley himself. It is The Merchant in Uriah and, um, or Oria. David, tell me which one it is. And it's um, signed by the author, a very slim little novella. And um, I'm excited to see the creativity of Dav David Wiley's mind. If you don't know David Wiley, I'm gonna, I'll link his channel below. Along with that package, he very kindly sent me a book about romantic, uh, the romantic, English romantic poetry, sorry about that, um, which has Keats and Blake and so on and so forth. And he, he knows that I've been exploring um, poetry and that he gave this as a gentle encouragement to continue my journey. The next book actually has kind of a silly story behind it. Um, we have some good friends over for Sunday snacks. That's what we call it. And um, they, you know, they have this new little baby. And I was reading Hilary Mantel's Thomas Cromwell series. And of course, I always bring up what I'm reading because I cannot help myself. Um, it is one of the ways that I take up space in the world and that I am a bit selfish is that I subject others to listening to what I've been reading, um, even in my real life. And, um, and our friend is, is devoutly Catholic. Um, he is a historian, um, very intelligent friend of mine. And so I was going on and on about Thomas Cromwell and how, how Thomas More, who really persecuted those who were trying to spread the translation of the gospel, the, the Bible from Latin into English, Thomas More was one of the figures that fought against that revolution. Um, and Josh was quick and uh, quick to point out, um, my friend Josh, a real life friend, was quick to point out that the people at the time weren't actually discontent with the Catholic religion and yet this switch happened from Catholic uh, Catholicism to Protestantism in England at that time. This, ha this change happened really quickly. And so he was like, you should really explore the other side of it, not just like Thomas More is, is evil and um, you know persecuted uh, Christians for spreading the gospel. He's like, there is another narrative. And so I would, you know, you should explore the other side. And so he actually sent me the book that explores the other side, which is called The Stripping of the Altar. And it's by um, Iman Duffy. I don't know this author. And I'm really hoping that it is, um, very readable, very enjoyably readable. I don't really know. <laughs> actually, as much as I, I know Josh and I know his reading taste, my friend, um, I actually, I, you know, I'm not sure. I, I don't know like his taste taste in books. <laughs> so um, I, I'm sure it is readable. I will ask him actually, how well is the narrative constructed? But um, it is a tome, but still, nonetheless, I'm excited to, to dive into a, a book that explores the other side. Okay, the next books are uh, YouTube Made Me Do It books. Um, the first two, of course, Steve Donahue plays a huge role in my reading life. Um, he's a book critic and has read the entire canon, if you believe in the canon. He's read the entire canon uh, more than once, <laughs> and so I really trust his recommendations. And he did a whole video about nonfiction recommendations to kind of get you started on nonfiction reading. And that really intrigued me. And a couple of the books that were on his list were Proud Boys and the White Ethnostate, which um, is um, how the alt-right is warping the American imag imagination. It's a very short account. And this is the book that is breaking my challenge because I really want to read this right away. It's a, it's a, slim, um, a slim account of what's going on in the United States during the Trump presidency, um, in a nutshell. Now, moving way, way back in time, um, I have St. Augustine's Confessions. Um, again, another Steve Donahue from that same video, which I will link down below, um, about nonfiction that will help you get started. And uh, yeah, I just, um, I can't remember what he said that made this book stand out, but I thought it was, it sounded great at the time. <laughs> I'm all about sort of building my classics knowledge. I, I really 
really enjoy reading classics. Um, I, uh, I'll get into this in another video, but I feel like in a lot of ways it makes me feel a lot less alone because I have realized that the struggles that I go through have been going on since the dawn of time. So, uh, Confessions by St. Augustine. Um, okay, so I was getting really into the Tudors, as I mentioned before, with the, you know, the Cromwell series. And um, it, it, so Mark from Book Time with Elvis and an echo from Gina, from Gina Stanier Books, mentioned um, the Matthew Shard Lake series. And this is the CJ Crimson Disillusion, which is set in Tudor times and it's a mystery and it's supposed to be gritty and, and great, really, really great. So um, I was really excited to pick this up and to expand my Tudor experience with a mystery book, which I rarely read. The final booktube made me do it purchase. Um, is that it? Yeah. The final booktube made me do it purchase is uh, from Sean the Book Maniac. He was talking about books that impacted him uh, throughout his life, and he told uh, told his audience, and I happened to be in his audience. So I'm like, he told me personally <laughs> that uh, my dear friend from my life, I write to you, and he talked about just how gorgeous her writing is. Um, Yin Yun Lee, um, how gorgeous her writing is, and then weirdly I clicked on an Eric Carl Anderson video and he mentioned this this again and I was like okay it's meant to be it's meant to be I need to read this um, and again I'm just I'm excited to to dive into something that potentially can grow grow me as a reader grow me grow my compassion and empathy and so on and so forth oh one more. rest of my books are um, children's books children's picture books of some sort though they're it's a, it's a strange collection the first one, again, I saw on Steve Donahue's channel and he mentioned how great the book was and how it really moved him. And I was like, okay, a picture book that moved him. I want to know what this is. And so it is I Am the Mummy, um, Head Nifet, and it is by Eve Bunting. And I know Eve Bunting's work, though I don't know this particular picture book. And Eve Bunting is a brilliant uh, picture book author. All right, the next, the last three have to do particularly with my project where I am reading 1001 children's books before you grow up, um, according to a list. But um, it's a, you know, it's become more of a guiding principle in my reading versus like a, a staunch list. Um, and so I have Moomin, and this is by uh, Tove Jansen, and this is a Finnish illustrator, and this was originally published in Swedish and translated into English. This character is is very 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 popular in um, in like Sweden and in Finland and, and so on and so forth. More popular overseas than here in the United States, and so so. Um, but still, regardless, the character design is very adorable. I find this. I find this character very, very cute, and I love the colors. And um, I know that I saw uh, Celia talk about it, um, her Moomin mug collection. I'll leave that link down below. It was such a cute video, but she—I mean, she just did. She was just showing her collection of Moomin mugs, and I was like, that character looks very familiar and very adorable. And then I was like, oh, I recognize it from my list, and so I wanted to to see what Moomin was all about and to fall in love with this character because I just find the illustration style, the choices that um, Jansen made, really compelling and very, very cute. And cuteness, cuteness adds a lot to, <laughs> to my choice in children's books. Um, speaking of cuteness, the absolute opposite of cute, which is, uh, oh my goodness, I'm gonna butcher this. Struven, Pierre? <clears throat> so this is a translated from German, I believe, um, Heinrich Hoffmann, um, and this is children's horror stories, uh, more or less. I have not read it, but the illustrations are terrifying. Um, let me find one that, that really kind of, oh yeah, here, so right here. He's cutting off the child's hand. Okay, so why, why a child would need to read it before they grew up, I will find out. Um, and I actually thought that this wasn't translated into English, so I was like, oh, that, that odd book with um, these nails. Do you see this, this man, this, char I don't, this character's nails? My goodness. Okay, so um, one moment. I thought I was going to get away with not reading this because I thought it wasn't translated, and then I found it was translated, and I was like, well... 
why not? Why not? So I'm uh, I'm gonna be reading this and I'll I'll report back on how much I enjoyed it. Ooh, one second. Okay, my final book is from an uh, an author illustrator that I am quite familiar with, and that is Raymond Briggs. I was gonna read this for New Worlds November, and then I just didn't end up picking it up until later. But it's When the Wind Blows. It is a post apocalyptic post apocalyptic like sci-fi um, graphic novel that's very very sh slim, and that has panels and everything. Um. And it's supposed to be it's supposed to be a really good read. Uh, it's just this very slim little little volume. So maybe I'll read this and it'll be part of my reindeer readathon. So that is it. Thank you so much for for watching. And um, again, I'm very sorry that I played my little joke a bit too seriously. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not much of a jokester, so maybe I should just stay away from that that genre of. Um, humor, you know, at all. Um, anyways, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Again, um, I don't plan on, I don't plan on buying a hundred books, uh, before I read one because I'm just too excited to read. Uh, maybe, maybe it's the best type of challenge if you're in a reading slump or if you have no books, you want to build a library, that would be great. Um, but definitely not the challenge for me. So, so yeah. But anyhow, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so, so much for being here. And I will see you all in my next one. Bye, guys. Bye.